Guy. What is it? What does it start with Guy? Guy, probably not expecting to hear from me, were you? You know I'm all about surprises. Look, we're gonna head up the coast next weekend. We're doing the drive from LA to Seattle. I have an interview up there on Tuesday, and Kelly has a friend who's gonna introduce her to some casting people from Vancouver. Can we crash at your place on the way up? We should be pulling through next Friday. I was thinking we could use it as an excuse to jam on our books. I want to see your new stuff, and I have a draft I want you to take a look at. I'm way beyond knowing what's good or not with my work, so I could really use your advice. And you know I'll give it to you, uh, I'll give it to you straight about your new book. Is there a title yet? Uh, could be an impromptu writer's workshop, I guess. Anyway, I think it'd be fun. Let me know. T. Having fun? Hmm. That could be good for him. It could. It would probably take away time from his writing, but also it could be very good. To get another writer's perspective on his work. Hey, it's a happy drawing. That's a nice change of pace. Dinner this week. Sunday, grilled cheese plus tomato soup. Ooh, that sounds delicious right about now. Monday, grilled steaks, potato salad, and corn on the cob. Summer special. Tuesday, beef straga straga nof, however you pronounce that. Buttered noodles and carrots. Wednesday, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and broccoli. Thursday, crock, uh, crack pot, pork chops, and three bean salad. Friday, hot dogs, plus mac and cheese. Saturday, Anne's crock pot Italian chicken, plus peppers. Honey, I'm sorry it's been so long since my last letter, but we've been all over the place. Have you gotten settled into that big house yet? I hope getting away from everything has been a, a help uh, for you and Dan. I'm writing because, speaking of getting away, your father and I are going to take a road trip. I found some good AARP deals, and with your father only working part-time, it wasn't very hard to arrange time off. It's been too long since our last trip. I've always enjoyed changes of scenery, and as you're hopefully learning, it can be just the thing a marriage needs. Lord knows it helped us. The trip won't take us close enough to the shore to come visit, I'm sorry to say. And if you write back, we'll be gone before your letter arrives. We'll call if one of our own... Uh, if one of our motels has long distance. But if we don't get a chance to call, send my love to Dan and Thomas. You know your father and I want the best for you all. Love, Mom. A new painting. Hey, how's it going? Oh, really good. Check sofa. Call Chamber of Commerce. Hotels in town. Double check T and K trip when Dan gets back. Oh, man. Mm. I just read this, right? Yeah. Another happy picture. Okay, good, good. Looks like Tommy's doing okay. Hold on just a second, I'll be right back. Alright, I am back. Apologies for the interruptions. I was actually gone for a half hour there for me, even though it was only like a second for you, and as such, I have forgotten completely what I was doing. What, what am I doing? Okay, so I need to search the house for everyone's clue. I think I was just starting on the clues. I must have been. Did I read this? I took Tynan up on the book jam. He hasn't seen a word of my new book, and fresh eyes are priceless. He bailed me out on Tramer's way. I hope he understands how much of that book worked because of him. I still remember when we were walking to the pond, and he had the idea about using newspaper clips and police reports. Of course, no matter how many times I tell interviewers it was his idea, they just keep giving me the credit. Maybe they just want the tidy auteur version. Oh well, can't change that. Let's just hope he has an idea for this one too. Friday can't get here soon enough. Yep, looks like he's welcoming it. I was thinking maybe he'd be frustrated by having to... 
you know, having someone come visit so he can't really spend the time to work on his book, but looks like he desperately needs the ideas, the input. I talked to Davy's parents, and they're okay with him sleeping over. They said they'd take care of Tommy some... Uh, some weekend in return. I know the timing isn't great, but maybe we can work something out. Let's talk when you get up. Lynn. Oh, yeah. Good news! Mom called today with a change of plans. They made better time on the first leg of the trip than they expected, and they're coming to visit. Bad news, they want to come this weekend. Did Dan tell Tynan they could stay here for sure, or is that still up in the air? I'll ask after dinner. She sounded cheerful enough on the phone, though I can't help wondering if they took this trip because they hit another rough patch. I hope not. I hope they just want to see Tommy and have a classic Mears family feast. Though, maybe seeing how they've ended up will be good perspective for Dan and me. Speaking of which, Dad better not get nosy. I've told him a million times that my marriage is not his business. Maybe I'll try the thing Christine told me. When someone asks you something private, just say, why do you ask? Put it back on them and see if they've actually got a reason to get into your business. Yeah, I've got to remember to try that. We'll see how he answers that one. Hmm. Didn't want to bother you while you were working, but didn't want to forget again. Been meaning to ask, have you found any ponds on your hikes? Creeks? No rush. Just curious. Mm. I can't say that. Into your memories. Well... I guess family time every night was too much to ask for. That worries me, though Dan did agree to be at dinner every night, so he's at least trying. It's just, we came here to start fresh and set things right. We were on such a bad course before. And if we can't make time to do it right while we're here, how will we be able to do it when we get back home? There'll be so much going on when we get back. Are we doing enough here? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if they can't make it work here, how... When they go back home, what are they gonna do? Uh. Oh, there's the other one. Or, no, that's one I just found. Something from over here, though, must be down? There it is. I thought Tommy was sleeping with us. I'm checking to see if this is a fold-out. Ah. That's right, I guess the, furni the furniture came with this place, right? So I guess they don't know exactly whether it is or not. Okay. What about Tommy? What about Tommy? He can sleep with us. Apparently he did say that. It's impossible to get into a rhythm right now. This place was supposed to create some peace and quiet, but I almost never get two unbroken writing blocks in the same day. I know I'll never get exactly the schedule I want, that's just a fact of life. But that doesn't make it easier to get good work done with everything else going on. Just gotta figure out a way to push through. No other choice, really. This book isn't going to write itself. It most certainly isn't. In fact, I don't think it's going to get written all that well at all. I mean, it is finished, technically. If you can call the first draft finished, that is, there is an entire book, but as for it being any good at all, as for it being sellable, nope.
Can Davy sleep over? Let me call his mommy. So Davy, that's probably the person I keep seeing in Tommy's pictures, right? The one that he plays with? It must be. I already read this, right? Yeah. Oh, one that's actually happy. Oh my god. Finally. That's very nice to see. Hi, Mom. Hey, Pumpkin. We can use the blue sheets to make a, a sofa fort. Oh, sofa forts are the best. Wash that ugly sweater Mom and Dad gave me so they can see me wearing it. <laughs> oh. oh, family. We could work something out. Check those fishing bowls. Maybe we could find a pond. Okay, hmm. It seems like such a... a petty thing just to wash that ugly sweater mom and dad... Uh, that Linda's mom and dad gave her, but... Yeah, it's gotta be Davy. But it's obviously important to her. So... Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do that, and then I'll compromise with the uh, the blue sheets. Now, where is it? Is this it? That is it. Oh, that's not ugly. Actually, yeah, kind of is. Just do the blue sheets. Alright, we continue this very strange diary, the diary of Kay Williams. May 15th, 1952. It is late, but I must record my thoughts. Perhaps it will help me make some sense of them. I should not say thoughts, as there is only one thought in my mind. I look, wa I look back, but a week, and see that when I arrived, my only thought was of Jay being gone. That sad thought has been replaced by another. What if I were gone as well? I feel regret in the simple writing of those words. If I am truthful, it is not a thought that has occurred to me before. I cannot be sure where it came from. It is almost as if it was put in place by something I do not understand. Oh. Hold on a second, does that mean I... I put it into th this person's mind? It was the ghost? Hmm. I must think of my family and their heartache. Our children have lost one parent. I could not bear to hurt them again, though they are all grown and have no practical, practical need of me. Yet I had no strictly practical need of Jay, and look at where that loss has left me. Perhaps I will venture into town tomorrow. Maybe some stranger, unknowing, will show me some kindness, some small thing that plants a seed of hope. That is so sad. They're waiting for a... They're hoping for a seed of hope just from a stranger. When they venture into town, what a... Small thing. Such a small thing. And apparently that's all they need. of K. Williams, May 16th, 1952. I feel shame looking back on last night's entry, yet it does clarify the choices before me. I can walk to the cliff, close my eyes, lean forward, and be done. It would not be hard. Or I can find a path forward without Jay. 
I hold no hope that I, will, that I will find another love in the autumn and winter of my life. But perhaps there is a peace to be found. I went into town this morning and stopped at the cafe. I sat at a sidewalk table and sipped coffee, watching people pass now and then as they lived their lives. I will never think of my time in this house fondly. The circumstances make such a remembrance an impossibility. But I know that my time here has allowed me to part the fog that clouded my mind when I arrived. I now know that there are two paths before me. All that is left is to choose. Blue sheets. Linda was so excited to see her parents that she almost felt happy putting on the hideous sweater they'd given her the previous Christmas. She paid close attention to how her mother and father interacted, and more than once, she and Dan talked about their own marriage in that context. The visit was a success, and her father was well-behaved by his standards. Dan knew how important it was for Tommy to play with his friends, uh, to play with friends his age, so he grabbed the sheets and gave Tommy a few tips on the finer points of structural engineering and sofa fort construction. The extra house guests meant the boys had to keep the noise down and play quietly, which put a damper on some of their fun. Dan hated missing a chance to get feedback on his book, and he found the company distracting. He tried to work through the commotion, but he never got into a rhythm. He couldn't even focus long enough to do small corrections. So instead, he accepted the role of selfless host and spent the weekend running errands, not working. Ooh, that's not good. The funeral. Uh, that night, Linda got a phone... Oh, God. This can't be good. Mark the 21st of this month on your calendars. For one day only, watch the world-famous Fighter Five as they scream across the sky. Witness death-defying feats of flying in a display unlike anything you've ever seen. Guaranteed to blow you away. Don't miss it. Anne, I just got off the phone with Mom. She told me about Grandma Joe. I know we expected it sooner rather than later, but... This is hitting me so much harder than when Granddad died last year. Do you remember going to Grandma Joe's house after school on Wednesdays and playing until Mom got off work? How Grandma Joe always had a surprise for us? Even if it was just cookies in the oven, she'd always time it so the whole house would smell like them when we got there. I hope the minister captures those little moments because they don't seem as little now. I wish the circumstances were different, but it will still be good to see you at the funeral. What am I saying? You probably won't even get this until after the funeral. I guess I just needed to write anyway. Love, Linda. Wait a minute, wait. Okay, this is strange. Grandma Jo. In the letters I was just reading last night from this K person, they said that they lost J. It seems quite a coincidence that the letters match, but at the same time, it seems impossible. I mean, what, what time is this set in, though? Because I know the letters were from the 50s, like 52, 53 or something like that. Or somewhere in the 50s. What is the current time, though? I... I wish I could go back to read them, but I don't know of any way to do that. Hmm. I wonder if there's a connection or if I'm just misinterpreting things. Seems like quite a coincidence. 
Dan, big news. Got a call from Bracket Books and Eugene, and they want you to do a reading from Windsong. Maybe even some Q&A, some book signings, all that good stuff. I think you should do it. In fact, I'm going to be pretty pissed if you don't. Bracket is a big outlet. So if this goes well, orders for the new book will definitely go up. I don't need to remind you how long it's been since Tremor's Way came out. If you don't keep your name out there, no one will even notice when you finish the new book, whatever it's called. Hell, speaking of the new one, why don't you read some of it too? Maybe the second chapter you sent me last month. That, w that one was pretty good. Bracket Books, Eugene, the 21st. See you there, Paul. P.S. You know the long game, right? Nailing this one could mean a bigger advance on the next book. Right. Call Paul first thing tomorrow morning. Any possible way to move it? Is this thing announced yet? Oh, God. Are we going to have to decide between, like, going to the funeral or going to the... The thing in Eugene? Oh, God. I mean, it's going to have to be the funeral if I have to decide that, but... It's going to be horrible for Dan. Dinner this week. Sunday, baked ziti and salad. Monday, hamburgers, baked beans, and corn of the cob. Dan grills night. Tuesday, beef stroganoff, butter noodles, and carrots. Grilled cheese, tomato soup, hot dogs, mac and cheese, Tommy's taco night, and beers for us. And crock, crock pot, Italian chicken, and plus peppers. Making me hungry, once again. It's a... A spaceman, I think. I don't know, but Tommy looks happy. Which is the most important thing. Hey. Hello. Here we go. Hmm. The painting advances a bit. They almost look like, well, ghosts. Like shadows. I walked out to the bluff to remember Grandma Jo and say goodbye. And on the way back, I started thinking about what it really means to have a family. To make that your focus. She seemed to take such joy in being surrounded by her family, providing for them, taking care of them. I hope I never took that for granted. When I got back to the house, a question hit me that I can't get out of my head. What will Tommy think about Dan and me when he gets older? And what if Tommy has kids of his own? I can't even begin to think of myself as a grandmother. I haven't even been a mother for that long, and I'm still feeling my way through what it means to be a good one. At least I'll always have an example. I miss you, Grandma Jo, and I'll never forget you. I promise. That's the pillow fort, with the blue sheets. Hey. Hey. Already read this, right? I just got off the phone with Mom. Yeah. And then... Most of you here knew my grandmother. For those who didn't, I truly wish you had. She was an example for all of us. Her warmth, her caring, and her smile were impossible to forget. It's still hard for me to believe she's gone. Without her, the world is... writing out what she's going to say at the funeral. <sighs> this just got extra depressing. 
think Tommy's the only one that's happy at the moment. Oh no. Joe's funeral's the same day as the signing in Eugene. And Paul says they can't move it. He'll understand if I bail because he knows Linda, but Grofield is a different story. They won't give a damn why I missed it. They'll just get a memo and put it in a spreadsheet somewhere and write me off just a little bit more. And it's not just the timing. If I do the reading, I've got to get that chapter in shape. It's not even remotely ready for anyone to see it. Can't worry about what Paul says. He's my agent. He's supposed to stroke me. And what about Tommy? Oh, I'm sorry, but the funeral is so, so much more important. thinking. As he looks out that window. And as for last weekend, I can't stop wondering what kind of advice Tynan would have had for Act 2. It's still a mess. I tried to work on it, but it was impossible to get anything done with so much going on. Although I guess I did flex a little creativity, I came up with an impressive number of errands to run just to get out of the house. <laughs> Not exactly where you wanted your creativity to go, though. You wanted it to flow into your book. Not into errands. Lynn, I'm so sorry. Tell me what I can do. Just be here for me. That's what she was writing that speech, isn't it? Mom and Dad left this morning, and I'll never have to wear that sweater again. It's not just ugly, it's hot and itchy. And the why do you ask trick completely worked. I don't think I've ever seen Dad... I don't know what else to call it. He blushed. That made the trip worth it. Although seeing that mom and dad are doing well was great too. Maybe Dan and I will end up that happy down the road. I hope so. I really, really hope so. Hi, honey. Is she in heaven? I'm sure she is, honey. The magazine... Uh, the magazine says there are going to be tons of planes. Do some serious work on that chapter first. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He needs a he needs to call and buy a ticket if he's coming to the funeral. All right, where's the phone? I think there's multiple phones. Which one? This one. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna do that. That funeral is hitting Linda, or the death of. of her grandmother is just hitting her really, really hard.
The Diary of Kay Williams. Maybe I should write that down just in case it's relevant. Kay Williams. May 19th, 1952. I have decided, and I am sure of my decision. I do not know which is right or wrong, only that my choice is my own. But it took three days, three days alone, letting whatever calming influence is here, for I am sure there is something, guide my thoughts. I thought about Jay, and talked with Jay in my mind, and I know that this is right. I cannot think about the path not taken, only the one ahead. Is it the only one? The only note? I think it is. Looks like it is, unless it was downstairs and I missed it. Alright, I'll do the, uh... I'll do the magazine. For Tommy. I didn't miss it, did I? No, there's just the one. Dan could compare the thought of Linda going to the funeral alone, so he bought a ticket and flew to Denver with her. The funeral was hard for Linda, but having Dan there made it easier to bear. They stayed up late the night of the funeral as Linda told Dan stories about Grandma Jo, and they talked of maybe being grandparents themselves one day. Dan sat Tommy down and did his best to explain why they couldn't go to the air show. Tommy had a crying fit. Dan eased the blow by promising to take him to the next one. Then they drove to town and went from store to, to store to store until they found a plain toy for Tommy, who loved it. <laughs> this isn't going to be good. Paul was livid when Dan called and said he couldn't make the reading. Dan was used to his agent laying into him, though what really worried him was that he hadn't gotten a chance to work on the chapter Paul had asked him to read. That gnawed at him. He knew he couldn't afford to keep putting his, his book second if he wanted it to be his best work. Oh, I've already pretty much accepted that. It's not going to be his best work. It... Nope. I got him. The road ahead. The summer came to an end, and Dan faced a difficult... I think this is the last one. Barb, by the time you get this, we'll be on our way home, so don't write me back here. It's hard to believe this summer's almost over. So much has happened. The show, getting used to life up here, painting more than I have in years, losing Grandma Jo, figuring out where Dan and I are. Part of me doesn't want to leave, but I know it's time. They say you can't go home again. I think I know what that means now. I don't have it in me to explain everything here, but things will never be the same. I don't even know what home I'm going back to. The only thing I do know is that I'm ready to start painting again. For real, like I did before Tommy. I'm scared and excited and nervous all at the same time. I just wish I knew how we were going to make it work. I hope this finds you well. Yours, Linda. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, after additional consideration, I'd like to augment my recommendation. 
I believe that the best course of action for Tommy's development will be continued tutoring throughout the school year. It will be important to coordinate with his teachers and make sure the lessons are aligned. As before, encouragement from both of you is a critical component. Mr. Kaplan, I have observed that Tommy looks to you in particular for validation, which I believe comes from a connection he's made with your profession. If at all possible, you should be a part of his tutoring, although Mrs. Kaplan is more than capable of aiding him as well. I hope I haven't overstepped my bounds by contacting you, but Tommy is a bright boy, and I think with the proper support, he can not only catch up, but excel. I understand you'll be leaving town shortly, but please don't hesitate to contact me by phone during the school year if I can be of help. God, I'm just feeling really, really depressed now. The music before, which was kind of depressing, but calming, is now mostly just really depressing. Look at the sun shining through. It's coming to an end. It's hard to describe my feeling right now, but there's something incredibly depressing about this. I mean, even though, like, the family's okay, they've, they're having a hell of a time. But the family's okay. Dan and Linda haven't got divorced yet. Tommy's doing pretty well. We're doing okay. But still. Still. <sighs> Once again, Linda has summed it up. Yep, that's pretty much it. Yeah, Tommy's doing really well. Dinner this week. Roasted chicken, grilled cheese, hamburgers, baked seedy. Lentil soup. Hmm. Reminds me, I haven't had lentil soup in a while. Mr. Kaplan, we have reached a decision and are pleased to offer you the position of Assistant Professor of Literature. <gasps> Holy crap! We had many applications, uh, applicants for the position, and after careful review, we feel your history with the university and your status as a published author will give you a unique connection to our students. We apologize for the lateness of the decision, but administrative adjustments delayed our annual budget review and the position was only recently approved for hire. Professor Strode? Stroud? Stroud? Will handle your course load until September 21st, at which point you will take over classes. We will provide temporary housing for you during the, this speedy transition, but need your answer as soon as possible. Your offer letter is enclosed. Please sign and return it at your earliest convenience. Wait a minute, does that require him to move? Oh, shit. Hello. Oh, no. Okay, let's keep going. I think I can kind of see where this is going. Linda, I'm pleased to meet you. Well, by letter, anyway. I'm surprised we've never met, considering how small the art community is. But from your letter, it sounds like you may not have been as active as you'd have liked for a few years. Regardless, I'm very excited to tell you more about our work here. At a high level, at a high level, the program is simple. We're a collection of artists, uh, a collective of artists, who use our work for the betterment of our city. We host fundraiser galleries, donate our work to charity auctions, and teach art classes. We offer both paid and unpaid courses, and all proceeds from the paid courses go to local charities, usually the food bank. Our free courses are part of a pioneer program we've recently started, where we provide a safe place for victims of violence members of our local AA chapter, and even parolees trying to get back on their feet. The program is still in its early stages, but we've been very pleased with the results. It's a very exciting time. Anyway, you'll find more details in the enclosed information packet. I'd love to talk to you about joining in person when you return to Laurenton. That sounds nice. That sounds very nice.
yeah, Tommy's really, really happy. He even has two race cars. Amazing! Mommy wants to stay too. I feel like I'm about to sneeze. I think I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> yep, I just sneezed. Excuse me. This could be it. An associate professorship at Hardesty? It's entry level, sure, but everyone has to start somewhere, and it's the perfect situation for writing. The sabbatical program alone makes the job worth it. And the thought of actually working with Professor May? Wait, I guess I'd be calling him Philip now. That'll take some getting used to. But moving's a big step. I can't imagine a new school with new kids would be easy for Tommy. I know staying in Laurenton would be better for him and Linda, but they aren't handing out professorships on the corner. This isn't the kind of offer you pass up without a very good reason. But I might have two good reasons. Tried to sleep on it last night. What a joke. You have to be able to sleep for that to work. Oh god, this is going to be a hard decision. That's Joe. Grandma Joe. I just talked things over with Dan, and we really have some serious thinking to do. The job at Hardesty sounds like a great opportunity for him, but moving would be so hard on us. I really want to join Art for All. And after everything we've been through with Tommy, it would be better for him to have some stability. I could even go full-time if Dan found a steady job, though I know he can't do that if he takes on extra tutoring with Tommy, and I'd never fault him for that. If we stay in Laurenton and Dan works with Tommy, I could still do the program part-time. Either way, it'd be better for Tommy and me than moving. But I know that professorship would mean so much to Dan. Can't everything be simple just once? That would be wonderful, if only. This could be it. Paul, there were days when I thought this moment would never come. When I finish writing this, I'm going to pack everything up and drop the manuscript in the mail. My palms are sweating just thinking about letting it go. I had no idea how hard it would be to finish this one. It took everything I had, and it's hard to look back over the summer without laughing. To think the plan was to get away from everything and just focus on the book. But you can't get away from yourself. Life doesn't give a damn about geography. I don't know when you'll get this or where we'll be when you do, or what you'll think. I know what I think, but objectivity left the building months ago. Some days I think this is the one. Other days I have a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach that says my career is over. All I can do is drop this in the mail and hope. Here goes. Hardesty University, care of Thomas Castle, 902 Braith, Braithwaite, I, Lane, how do you pronounce that? How long's the drive? Two hours. We'd have to move. Two hours. Yeah, that's that's far too long of a commute. Mm. Paul gave it to me today. He was righteously pissed about missing that reading. No, I don't know. I don't think he's pissed at me exactly. He knows why I missed the reading. Grovefield came down hard on him, and he had to vent somewhere, more likely. But still, damn. The worst part is the chapter still needs work. I have to find some time to clean it up. Soon. Oh, 
always staring out the windows, sighing. <sighs> Whoops. Whoops. We just got back from the funeral. It was even harder than I expected, but it was moving to see just how many people loved Grandma Jo. She really was a special woman. Dan was there every step of the way, even though we got in a lot of trouble for missing that book signing. I don't think it's fair how mad they got at him about that. It was a funeral. But I guess that doesn't count for much in the business world. Nope. I could even go full time if... You can say it. If I got a real job. Real job. <laughs> Real job. Another happy one. racing cars together. You'd make new ones, buddy. What about my friends? Show my friends my new backpack at school. Hiya. Hey, baby. Send my second painting for the full-time application. Just drop the envelope in the mail. <sighs> okay. God, it'd be such a good job for him to have. Just <sighs> perfect for him to have. A good steady income and the ability to continue on writing. Just, oh. It's what I want to do. But... It would be very bad for Linda and very bad for Tommy. I I think I'm going to side with Linda and Tommy. Here. I think I I think I'm going to go with what's best for them. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dan. Selecting the canvas means that the Kaplans will stay in Laurenton, which will also let Tommy go back to his own school. Dan will have to turn down the offer from Hardesty. There are no compromises for this decision. God. Let's take a look at the others. means that the Kaplans will stay in Laurenton, which will also let Linda work with art. With art for all, part-time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the letter. Where's the letter? I don't remember where it was. Is it this? No, no, it's back, it's back here, right? Is on his desk. Wow, can I see it? It's done. The Kaplans will move to 
Blairstown or Blairston? Linda won't be able to work with Art for All, and Tommy will have to start at a new school. I'm gonna go with painting. I'm, I'm gonna go with Tommy and Linda. There he is, slaving away up there. I'm sorry, Dan. Whisper to Dan and finish the story. There's no compromises. Is there anything left to read? Dan realized that supporting his wife didn't mean completely giving up on his writing career. So he declined the professorship offer and started looking for a part-time job. Linda joined Art for All full-time, where she blossomed as an artist. After a few months, she started her own workshop for recovering alcoholics, and she knew, she knew she'd found her calling. Tommy was happy to see his friends on the first day of school, and although his schoolwork was still difficult, he was glad he hadn't had to move. The stability of going to the same school was good for him, and his mother explained to him how hard it had been for his father to turn down a new job. In his own way, Tommy understood. Dan could barely get the words out when he called Hardesty to decline the offer. He knew they wouldn't care about his reasons. And he turned down the job, and he turned the job down with full knowledge that he might never receive such an offer again. He would have to keep clawing his way forward, praying that the next advance check would come, his career dependent on nothing but the quality of his work. And that's how the Captain Summer, Summer in the House on the Cliff came to an end. It was much more than just a single season on the coast. Dan's choices there would come to de define the rest of his life. Dan tried, but he couldn't get the final draft of his book into shape. It was never published, and he gave up writing completely. He was devastated by the loss of not just his career, but his dream. He never recovered professionally or creativity, or creatively, and he just spent the rest of his life bouncing between jobs. When they left the house, Dan and Linda's love was deeper than it had ever been. They spent the rest of their lives on an endless honeymoon, traveling and embracing life in a way that few couples ever do. They grew old together, always secure in a deep love that carried them through whatever life handed them. And by summer's end, Tommy was a new child. He returned to school full of joy and became one of the most popular kids in his class. Though unlike most of the cool kids, he remained friendly and grounded. By high school, he began getting national attention for his drawing ability, and after going to one of the most prestigious art schools in America, he became an award-winning graphic novelist, beloved by his fans, friends, and family alike. Dan would look back on that summer from time to time and wonder why he had made the choices he had. He never quite took the feeling that the voice in his head had been more than just a voice, and in quiet moments he even imagined that he had been a character in someone else's novel. At times, he was almost sure of it. Oh, and there we go. 
made by one person and dedicated to his wife. Makes me wonder how much the the making of the game follows what Dan was going through. I wonder. Okay, well. Ooh, where do I start? I I really, really, really liked it. I liked it a lot. And I just realized I recognize a ton of these playtester names. A lot of them. They're a bunch of game developers, I think. Yep, they most certainly are. Hm. Oh, apparently interviewed a bunch of parents about having children. Wow. Okay, so let's dig into it. Let me let me analyze it a bit and give give my thoughts. God, where do I even start? I'm so bad at starting uh, talking about a game that I just played. Even though I have so many thoughts in my head, it's hard to get them out. And I always forget stuff. All right, well, let's um looks like the credits are done, so let's see if there's uh, a scene after the credits or anything like that. Loading. What is it loading? The menu? It is. It's the menu. Alright. Let's see. It's always tough for me to try to do justice to a game. I always feel like I, I'm, I don't know, selling it short? Well, I'm not trying to sell it, but... I always feel like I just don't do it justice with my descriptions. With my thoughts. But I'm gonna try, once again. As I do for every game. So, what I really, really like about the game, one of the things I like about the game so much is that it focuses so intently on just a small group of people. And just, it, it focuses laser sharp on the characters. It is all about the people. It's about human drama. Which is something that I really love, and it's frankly not all that common in games not really not not this much of a laser focus on it being just all about the characters you know it's not it's not a story about saving the world or some sort of fantastical gigantic epic no it's a very personal story it's just about this family and trying to make it in life such a sim a simple thing such a, a common thing it's just about life in general, just living, you know? The decisions you make that set up and influence the rest of your life. And I love that. You know, I just, I connect to that a lot more than I do some gigantic fantastical story. It's, I, I love it. Yeah. I love the fact that it's set in a single house and you're just let loose to explore it. That's one of the most enjoyable things for me to do in a game, is just exploring someone's house. It's because it's very personal. Someone's house is very personal. It really says a lot about them. The, the things they have in it. Just, I mean, you know, people's whole lives are typically in their homes or their apartments. Yeah. The framing of the game, sort of who you are, is interesting. The fact that you're a ghost of some sort. It seems like that story was developed a little bit. You know, there's some sort of hints about it, that you've been there for a long time. And you've caused a lot of other people to sell it. To sell the home and move away because you creep them out, I guess. So there's some story development there. And then there's a whole thing with the, the decision someone made to, uh, from... Uh, Kay Williams, talking about Jay 
having died, and I'm still not sure if that was in any way connected to Grandma Jo. It's probably just a coincidence, but I don't know. It seems strange that their names start with the same letter. But I don't know if that's tied in with the story. But yes, the uh, the framing of it, sort of who you are, the way you interact with the game is very interesting. The fact that you're a ghost. it's So it's kind of developed, but for the most part, it just feels like just a uh, kind of just an excuse to allow you to do stuff in the game, which is perfectly fine. I just thought it was interesting that you're a ghost. It kind of adds a little bit of... I don't know, I don't want to say creepiness, but... Almost like... I don't know, I'm kind of stuck between wanting to say that... Maybe it's meant to be somehow metaphorical that you're a ghost. I... I don't know if maybe it's meant to be metaphorical, or... Maybe it's more sort of more like a kind of works as a commentary on games and how, as a player, you are interacting with the story, you're kind of telling people what to do. And that's what you as a ghost were doing, you're telling Dan what to do, basically. I don't know, I just thought it was kind of neat. It may be as simple as, they had a family. You know, the creator had made a family. They wanted these characters here, and they wanted you to be able to interact with them. And... Maybe he was just thinking, okay, what's a what's a good way to allow you to interact with this family? You know, what's a way to justify the player's, I don't know, existence, I guess? Like, why are you here? I guess you're a ghost is one of the answers. As strange as it sounds, as strange as it sounds, it actually kind of works. And I still can't escape the feeling that maybe somehow I was bound to the house, trapped there because I was unable to leave. That feels more like it's supposed to be um, a limitation of your character within the story and not a technical limitation. It's possible you can't leave the house just because, well, you know, if you have to go outside, then now you have to design an entire outside, and that is a ton of work. But it feels more like a story limitation. Like you're not supposed to be able to leave, like you're trapped. And then there's the whole caged bird painting, which made me feel even more like that. So it's interesting. There's a lot you could do with that. But the ghost, there's a lot you could see into it, and what exactly it's... if it's supposed to mean anything, that you're a ghost, I don't really know. But it makes for a very interesting... existence within the game world, I guess you could say. But coming back to the humanness of the story, and the fact that it focuses on... human drama. And a family. Once again, that's my favorite thing about it. The decisions you make. I mean, most of them weren't incredibly... Hmm. But they... They weren't massive dilemmas to make so much. They, they kind of were. For the most part, I was just thinking, focus on Linda and Tommy. And if your book doesn't do too well... Oh well. Like, it's more important to focus on his family than his work. That was my thinking, and that's what guided almost every single decision that I made. I almost never focused on this book. I think I did it once. One time, with the bonfire. And that was it. So it's not that, for the most part, the decisions were agonizing to me. They, not quite, but... The thing is, I knew that by focusing on the rest of his family, I was neglecting him. I was neglecting his creative fulfillment. Which is... I mean... <laughs> You're like your creative fulfillment. When you're an artist, you your creations, what you make, what you put into the world, that is that is such a big part of who you are. That is a big part of your legacy of what you leave behind in the world after you die. Is your creative works. Of course, I mean there's also his son, but I mean, just speaking about his art, it's a huge part of what he's leaving behind. And how he's influencing the world. In other words, it's damn important. So by focusing on the rest of his family, I was screwing his creative fulfillment, I was screwing his... well, his entire career, basically. And as you saw, not surprisingly, that led to him no longer being a writer. 
that's what he did in life. That's what he wanted to be. He, he wanted to be a writer. And that was ruined. Never to write again. That's incredibly sad. He lost so much. But, but, think of what he gained. He gained a, a wonderful relationship with his wife for the rest of his life. And his son. What's more important? Well, just as I was thinking when I was making the decisions, I think it's better. This way, even though, you know, creativity, creative, what's the word? Creatively? Create, creatively, that's the word. Creatively. He, I mean, his creativity is basically, uh, it's either dead or just untapped. Whatever you'd say. I don't know if he even has it anymore, but if he does, he certainly doesn't really use it. And that's incredibly sad. That drive that exists or existed within him is either gone or just frozen in time, never to be, you know, never to come out again. That's incredibly sad. But, again, look at what he gained. What's more important? What's, what's more fulfilling? If I focused on his novel, he maybe would have been a great writer. If I focused on nothing but his novel, maybe he would have been an amazing writer. And he would have had a bestseller, and he would have had all the success in the world. But then maybe he would have divorced his wife. The relationship would be over. His son would not be doing too well. Wouldn't be adjusting well, would be getting bullied, and isn't, isn't catching up as fast as he should, because Dan wasn't helping him with his exercises. Is that better? I don't think so. But... It's hard to say. And that's the brilliant thing about the game. You don't... You don't win it. <laughs> you don't win the novelist. There is no winning. There's no right answer for the most part. There might be some better answers than others, maybe, but there's no right answer. There's just choices and consequences. You do things. Things happen as a result of that, and... These little small decisions all add up and they end up changing the entire course of your life. Which is incredibly depressing. It is actually incredibly depressing. Y you know what I'm thinking? Let's get a little personal here. What I'm thinking is I'm 21 years old. And I don't have... Uh, I don't have a wife. I don't have any kids. I've never slaved for a long period of time over, like, a, a book or a, a piece of art. In other words, I don't really know... I don't have first-hand experience with most of what this family went through. I think the only thing I had the most experience with uh, that I even had any experience with is just that Dan and Linda were thinking about maybe getting a divorce. They hadn't actually said it yet, but they were thinking about it. And their marriage was certainly on the rocks and in danger. And I was thinking, yeah, my parents divorced when I was young. It was absolutely horrible. It was fucking terrible. So I, I certainly sympathized a lot with Tommy, thinking of if he had to go through that, just... No. <laughs> that's, that's... Now that I think about it, that's probably one of the reasons I was so... Stuck on... Saying, sorry, Dan, screw the book, but... Take care of your family, because I didn't want that to happen. And thankfully it didn't. Which I'm so glad about. So I think that's the only part of the story that I really have any first-hand experience with, but everything else... Not really. But despite not having that personal experience with a lot of what makes the story so... Uh, powerful. I, I still found it powerful nonetheless, and I, ima I imagine someone who... You know, someone who has had to make these sort of decisions... Would find it even more powerful, far more powerful, than even I found it. Someone who's had to decide between their family and their work, or give up a job offer, and things like that.
But even without that personal experience, I still... I still cared deeply about what this family was going through and what was happening. And it still maybe uh, affected me emotionally a lot. Like I knew, like I felt to me that focusing on the family was the, the right thing to do. There's, there's almost no doubt in my mind that, that was the right thing to do. But I knew what it meant for Dan. I knew what it would probably cost him. And exactly what I thought would probably happen to Dan is what happened. Yeah. Oh, what else is there to talk about? I think I actually kind of did a good job summing it up, amazingly. Although I'm sure once again I'll remember things I didn't mention. Um, I, I don't know, I kind of wanted to talk about some... A couple small things, some technical aspects of the game and whatnot, but... That almost feels weird now that I've just talked about... Now that I've basically been talking about emotions and emotional things so much, it feels weird to go into... Talking about, like, the options menu. But, alright, what the heck, I'll do it. Major props to the developer for putting in an incredible amount of options. This is quite rare, and it's very, very nice. You can really fine-tune a lot of stuff, like the crosshair visibility and mouse smoothing and how you want the voiceovers to be read and all sorts of stuff. It's very, very nice. I really appreciate that. So yes, that's just a little technical thing. Um, I do want to mention that it's very strange the fact that you can set the difficulty to stealth mode, which adds in that totally unnecessarily gamey element. Uh, I don't know why that's there. It's very strange. It's... Uh, it's almost like the developer... I don't know, maybe the developer was worried or didn't have enough confidence that the, the just the human drama part of the game is is strong enough to really get people's attention, so maybe he felt like it needed to have uh, this kind of gamey element. This more traditional sort of gamey element, this kind of this stealth thing, to you know, to have it work, uh, which just isn't true at all. As as you just saw, as I just experienced, that is not true at all. You don't need it. This game doesn't need it. It works beautifully without it. If anything, I, I think it would just distract from the detract from the experience. So yeah, it really doesn't need it. And thankfully, thankfully. Thanks to the incredible amount of options you have, you can actually turn it off, which is great. I'm so glad that wasn't forced on. If it was forced on, that would be very unfortunate, but it's not. So, it's not even worth that much of a mention. It's just... It's an option that is very... Like, I don't know why it's there, but the fact that you can turn it off means... I mean, you really can't complain about it, right? Just turn it off if you don't like it. It's just very, very strange. I really don't know why the developer put it there. I don't know. But yeah, you can just turn it off. Hmm. Is there anything else to mention? Did I mention I really like this game? Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> I really do. Oh, I know there's other things to mention. There's gotta be. Okay, actually, yeah. I like the small details, like the fact that as a ghost... You bob up and down very slightly, very slowly, very subtly. That's a nice little detail. It just adds a little bit. Just just a little bit. Of the sort of feeling that you're actually a spirit and not just uh, a camera. You know, floating with the typical sort of character controller sort of thing. It's nice. I really like the music. It's very sparse. It's very sparse, it's very kind of ambient. And just... I guess you could say meditative, or contemplative. Which I think worked perfectly. It's very sad, very melancholy, kind of peaceful sometimes, but mostly just very sad to me. I always just found myself staring out the window, just thinking. Or watching... Or watching... Dan or Linda stare out the window. And thinking about them thinking, which is kind of funny, I guess. Hmm.
It's weird. I feel so depressed after playing this game. And yet, it ended on a pretty... It, it ended pretty well. I mean... Creatively, Dan is not <laughs> in a good place. He's, he's in a horrible place, but the family's together, and they're doing well. They're happy. That's good. Isn't it? Yeah, of course it's good. Why am I depressed? Maybe because I'm thinking... Oh yeah, I don't think I ever mentioned. I don't think I got to this point. I was talking about how I... You know, I can identify with at least the marriage part, the, the rocky marriage part of this story, but not the being a parent or, you know, working on a piece of art for a very long period of time. But another thing I realized, maybe this is what's depressing me so much, is that I'm realizing I'm going to have to make these decisions later in life. And you know what? That sucks. <laughs> Making decisions about the entire course of the rest of your life sucks. I don't want to do it. Can someone save me from life, please? Can someone please stop life from happening? It's going to happen. It's it's happening right now. I don't like it. I don't I don't like it. Yeah, can someone make it stop? I guess not. Damn. And if a game can make you think that, then I think it's a pretty damn good game. If it's making me think of things that personal. I mean, really, how often do games make me, you know, make you think of that sort of thing? I'm seriously thinking of that. How often do games make you think of incredibly personal things like that? For me, almost never. That's why I really like these kind of games that just focus on people so much. This real-world situations, just people. You know what, this actually... This actually, that makes me think about a TV show. Yeah, there's actually, there's a TV show called In Treatment. It aired on, I believe it was HBO. Um, it ended years ago, I think. It went, on, it went on for at least a couple seasons. And the, I think it's one of the most brilliant TV shows ever made because it is entirely, entirely just about people. It's about a therapist. And each episode is usually just about... Uh, takes place over a, a therapy session. And it's... Oh my god, it's so good and it's just about people. There's no action whatsoever no action there's no you know there's no killing there's no people punching anybody there's no violence i like shows with a lot of violence of course but it's entirely about people and you know a lot of people might be afraid to do that because they think it'd be boring like you're not going to you know your audience isn't going to care you need to keep their attention but no it's just about people there's no action whatsoever and yet it's one of the most brilliant and captivating shows i've ever seen it's also incredibly hard to watch because it's very... Yeah, it's very human and very realistic to a very disturbing degree. And that makes me think of this game. The Novelist. Yeah. Anything else to mention? Not much. I mean, I guess I could talk about the art style. There's not much to say about it. The art style is good. It's, you know, I liked it. It's... I don't know, there's not really much to say about it. I mean... It did its job. It wasn't particularly interesting or... It wasn't really particularly bad or good. It just, you know, it served its purpose. It really wasn't the focus. And that's perfectly fine. The focus was just on the characters and the decisions that you made. And that's, um, that's as it should be. But 
Is there anything else to say? I'm once again thinking, what am I forgetting? I'm going to stop recording and then two minutes later I'm going to think of something else. No, okay. I guess that's it. Well, I... Once again, I love this game. I am not going to forget it anytime soon, that's for sure. <sighs> God, I feel really depressed now. And I love it. I mean, not feeling depressed, but I love that this game actually... made me go through so many emotions and affected me so much. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, actually one thing that's worth mentioning is that because you make decisions in the story, you could of course replay and there are many different endings as you can imagine, depending on what you do. However, in the past I found that replaying heavily story-based games is... it sometimes doesn't work out too well. And that sometimes it reveals cracks in how much influence you can actually have. Although in this case, I, I have no doubt you can have a lot of influence over what happens. There's no doubt about that. But the fact that you have to repeat some things. You're going to have to collect all the clues again. And I'm sure they're going to be the same clues. I, I don't think they're randomized to any degree. Just uh, the fact that you're repeating stuff kind of... I don't know. It can, re it can kind of take away from the experience. So I'm starting to feel like having one... Like, having one run through a heavily story-based game is probably the best thing for me to do. I feel like it might take away from it if I played again. I, I want my first experience here to be, you know, to be the one, the definitive experience of the game. I don't want the last thing I remember of it being, you know, like a, a subpar second playthrough that maybe didn't quite work as well as the first. I know when I replayed episode one of The Wolf Among Us, and purposely tried to do basically the opposite of what I did before just to see what would change... That did not go well. That was a mistake. It really was a mistake. And because my first experience with a novelist is so good, I don't want to risk that, so... I don't intend to replay it. Although it definitely has a... at least a pretty good amount of replayability, because, again, you can very much influence what happens in the story. Obviously, you could focus on... you could focus on Dan's book. To the exclusion of everyone else. He'll be the best damn novelist in the world. With no family. Or at least a family that doesn't care about him. Yep. You could do that if you wanted to. But I shall leave this as my one and only playthrough. So, I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of The Novelist. The, the Novelist. The Novelist. Thank you for watching.